I'm gonna walk you through CS183S Lecture 16, which is how to run, how to hack a sales booth, how to produce a sales booth where you're gonna be on the front line selling uh, a sales booth where, where it could be at a trade show, it could be where you get a demo table. Um, and I'm gonna go over and grab a pen. This is your sales booth. I'm gonna go over these things. Red zone, yellow zone, green zone. Don't flippantly just say, oh yeah, I get it, the stoplight colors. Red zone, write this down, red zone is where you close for new business. Red zone is where you close for new business. Yellow zone is where they're potentially slightly interested in your business. Green zone is they're just blowing right by your demo table. Red zone, yellow zone, green zone. And these zones are gonna get super complex in a hurry because sales boothing, sales uh, maximization at a booth, I've boiled down into years and years and years down into this specific and very succinct video that will hands down make, take you from zero sales experience at a booth to probably one of the best booth salespeople that are on the planet. That's how confident I am in doing these things. Okay, so initially this is what happens with a booth. Let me define some of these zones. In fact, let's do this. Let's do uh, this booth. Okay, so initially this is the booth. Initially this is your booth, and these are the people, okay? These are the people, and you are, in essence, uh, these two people, and this is a booth. Now, initially, initially, you are looking at this, and these are, this is the red zone, it's kind of small, this is the yellow zone, not very, not very big either, and this is the green zone. This is your sales table, remember, this is your sales table. So, initially, one of you guys will be, well, I'll go over people orientation in a second. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be trying to expand the red zone, yellow zone, green zone so that, I'm setting up my tripod, so that way you will be uh, closing deals in the red zone. And you're going to be literally wrangling people into the red zone. By wrangling, I mean you're you're going to be shepherding people like an Australian shepherd. And you're going to be gathering up these literally these like sheep. And I hate to call prospects sheep, but they sort of act in a, in a sheep-like manner, uh, especially VCs. They love buying deals that the other wolves also want to buy. Here we go. Nice. Okay, so this is normally how a sales booth is. Where those are your couple prospects, you're at a trade show, and they're just blowing by this area. And then this is where, incorrectly, most people stand. Or actually, they incorrectly sit. That's where they sit. Where the people are blowing by, there's no influence, the, your red zone, meaning your clipboard to gather leads. Uh, super, super sliver of any interest. Basically, people aren't interested and you're sitting on your butt uh, not doing anything. So, you want to stand. So, you want to stand and you want to... Method number one, write this down, is you want to actually grow your zones by standing and slowing down traffic. So this person will be the anchor, this person will be the satellite, okay? So this person's the floater. This person's the floater satellite, this person's the anchor, the AKA, the closer. The closer is right here. So then the anchor, the satellite, will be floating, and they're gonna be float as far away as in the green zone, okay? Because you're trying to expand your red zone, which will get more complex in a hurry. You're going to be, as this point person, aka satellite, aka uh, point person, 
this point person will be trying to look for uh, prospects and they will slow these people down they will slow these people down out out in the green zone okay out in the green zone so this person's sole goal initially is to get one person okay let's have this be a, a person we'll have one person walk them over and say oh and your attention AIDA attention are you interested in cell phone number underwriting as it pertains to risk mitigation inside of your credit industry and the person's gonna be like huh what I do risk I don't understand anything what you said oh that's interesting because I have Larry back here and Larry back here <laughs> you like how uh, high quality this production is don't you well Larry back here and this is this person talking the point Larry back here is going to uh, explain to you about how risk can be minimized risk can be minimized risk can be mitigated and risk can be eliminated using cell phone number underwriting uh, by using cell phone uh, tranching as it pertains to uh, whether or not the telephone number was ported in or if it's a burner telephone meet Larry and so you drop off the prospect and then the point person leaves it is critical to make the introduction to your anchor and this is where nobody right now your table is a barren desert okay all you got is a bowl of gum back there and a bunch of clipboards that nobody's filling out their own leads this will be the uh, the leads the lead form just on a little clipboard name email contest whatever that's a lead gen form it is critical for the point person to say hey are you interested in RMRMRE oh cool that's what our company does meet Larry Larry's the pink okay well we're actually gonna switch in a second but Larry's the pink cross the pink X Meet Larry, he'll tell you all about it. And this person, okay, the prospect just sits there. The point person, it's critical. The point person now goes out because your red zone, they're in the red zone, okay? Now the point person, they now go ahead and they go try to go get more people. That's what you do as the point person. Now, let's set the point person aside and right now, the anchor, the closer, their job is to build this red zone. You don't want to get rid of this person right away. You want to try to have them dangle because you want your red zone to be huge. This is what you want your red zone to look like, okay? You want to have a bunch of people in here uh, filling out forms and becoming s potential sales. And that's what the anchor's job is to do. Now, the point person sees that there's a bunch of people these are all people okay these are all people in the spots so the red zone is now actually larger the red zone is now actually larger because you've got people in the red zone now what this does okay there's a bunch of people there's a bunch of people all in these these are people okay so this will be uh, another person they're actually waiting in line to give you their money not even joking people are sheep and they love lines VCs, if you want to raise VCs, if you want to raise VC, get seven other VCs to be in front of this one, and this one will be like, oh, oh, take my $35 million uh, for 25%. Uh, I don't know what I'm buying, but uh, these seven people in front of me seem like, and is that Sequoia? Oh, we love Sequoia deals. Normally we do it in the uh, second. Normally we follow on a Sequoia, but you know what? We'll just airmail in 35 million. Yeah, sheep. So the point person, this is subtlety. This is, I, I sound like I'm joking. I'm really not. Now, you can actually, as two people, actually have your booth self-manage itself. And then so you'll... As the point person, okay, let's call the point person uh, Pam the, no, not Pam, Peter. Peter the point person, okay, he's a CS major, he's a orange X, uh, 
watch the sales video and now is going to execute sales. So as the point person, he's going to motion to, uh, let's not have him be Larry anymore, let's have him be, uh, Peter's co-founder's name is Sheila. Stephanie, I don't know. Points to his co-founder and then does this. That means they switch spots. Now, Peter, the co-founder, is the closer, and this person, you, oh yeah, you, this is you. You are now running point. So you're running point, and all these flow of people now are gonna be wondering, hey, why is that booth in Fuego? Now you've done something in the real world to mimic the waitlist maneuver, which startup companies are decent at. This is how they got decent at it, by initially doing some small promotion in the real world, and then waitlisting people. The faster you can build a waitlist, the better you'll do. The faster you build a waitlist. So, uh, you, this is you. Now you are running point. Now, you can actually, when a bunch of people are just filling out this lead gen form, which is name, email, uh, company, okay? And they're picking up their stick of gum or whatever bowl of awesome. I love gum because everybody wants one stick of gum because everyone's breath smells. Right now my breath smells, but you can't tell because it's on video. Okay, so now uh, Peter, the co-founder, is going to be also running point. You've now got two people running point, and your booth is going to be in fuego because all you're going to do is make the green zone the, ye the yellow zone. So now this entire area is your red zone. So you're actually going to be here. This is what happens when I do a conference because... That's the Four Seasons, okay, and this is the convention center, and people at the convention center, yeah, super uh, lens flare, let's put lens flare, you're the lens flare, look, you got that lens flare, you're in fuego, so these prospects that are walking by, they're like, oh, what the heck's going on in the Waterloo room over at the Four Seasons, I wonder what's going on there, it looks really cool, so then they'll be like, oh, how do I get there? Oh, it's uh, 200 yards that way. And they're at the convention center. So they walk, 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 walk. And then they lay down for the deal. Lay down is where they buy something. Because everybody wants to buy something where there's already a lot of people. So when you're two people running, uh, two people, now two people are on point. Let me go over some critical dynamics of when two people run the point. Let's now switch this thing, okay? Now you're three people working a booth. And let's say that there's nobody at the booth. So your red zone's back to being small. Now you've got three people. Three people together, okay? This is a rock pile. This is a rock pile. And most people, when they do a trade show, they actually rock pile behind the table. They actually rock pile behind the table. It is atrocious to walk, to, to be, to rock pile behind the table. This is why. When you're rock piling behind the table, let's say there's three people, okay? Three people. When you're rock piling behind the table, it's incredibly intimidating and your red zone will always stay small. Never, never, never have three people all behind the table. Maximum of one person. If it's, if it's, okay, so that's the, you never want to have three people behind the table. Now, the only time to have three people behind the table is when you're so in fuego, okay, here, that it's literally everybody is here. So you actually don't need a point, I'm going to, so that's, so, so this, they're all filled with people. That's the only time to have three people behind the table because you don't need a point person out here wrangling in a there because these people, they're, they become your point person. They become all, all these people are all looking in going, oh, wonder what's going on there. They must be doing something incredibly awesome. 
at this credit risk conference for credit executives because normally it's all boring ass crap and these people look like they're doing something awesome. Are they making freedom toast back there? What's that smell? <laughs> Smells like a winner. So that's the only time three people should be back here because you're doing so much paper processing of all these leads, all these sales, all these people signing up for your thing. Now, a, a critical detail for when you're in this mode, okay, is to only have one person there, one person here, so this is the point person, and another point person here. Now, to sometimes start up, I leave it no anchor where you don't have anybody at the anchor slot. You have point person, point one, point person two, point person Peter uh, three. I know, Brady loves this stuff. Brady, who's a Shih Tzu? Brady the Shih Tzu, okay? He would be, I would put him maybe on the point because He's super friendly, and he he's super friendly. So he's naturally a great point person. I don't know if he's good at closing deals yet. You know what? He's not. He's a puppy. Uh, he hasn't been able to sign people yet because he can't push the pen across the, the table. So when your three people run on the point, this is a common mistake that I often see, is that when this is also a, a salesperson in your booth, is a lot of times two people will clump together and their shoulders will be head to head. So so they'll literally be hotboxing each other and then it makes it very intimidating for a new person to walk up here and then interrupt these two people's conversation. So it is important to keep your shoulders and your body language open to new people and then and then when you, as soon as there's any kind of interaction, this is uh, an interaction here, let's say. As soon as there's any kind of interaction, to literally wrangle them and push them towards that table. To push them towards that table. To push them towards that table. And then have Peter or anybody, you eyeball them, you walk them over, you take a pen, you took a pen, Lay the clipboard down, lay the pen down, and say, oh, this is Peter. He'll tell you more about our cell phone number underwriting technique as it re relates to debit reporting analysis for Sesame Credit because you're trying to profile Chinese citizens on behavior or whatever. So you lay the pen down, you lay the clipboard down, and you introduce them to Peter, and then you walk, and then you walk away back to the point. There, there's some common psychological dynamics to it. They can initially be rude to you and say, oh, we're not interested. But as soon as this point person is making the introduction to a new person, there's a time extension involved. There's a obligation to spend at least a couple minutes. And so long as you're not marketing a total piece of crap, a total turd, there's probably something that's going to be cool that they can look at and be involved with, which therefore leads to this, okay? This is your goal. This is your goal, where you wanna have all these people pushing people, pushing people, pushing people, wrangling people in, uh, and then having this person who's walking by, this is now a prospect, having people walk by and be like, oh, what's going on there? Seems like there's a lot of excitement. And the mechanics of of when your booth literally turns, the temperature will turn and you'll get sales cycles. And and having the, the, the point person wrangle in singular people to lay them down at this table is so important. And you can even do go beside the table Later, you can even have prospects, because this is a table where people are writing, you can actually have people go behind the table because the bigger your red zone is with warm bodies, the better it'll be. In fact, if you've got three people, let's say this is now back to a salesperson. If you've got three people, you can have it be where, where 
a person will be actually writing down things and your team member will actually be helping them out so they'll actually look like a customer you can't even prospect you can't even tell so then this person's point person job is slightly easier to then deal with all the foot traffic that's rolling on through i hope some of these things help you uh do a booth and hopefully your booth often looks like this where the red zone is all the way out here this is very similar to the Bill Belichick uh, X's and O's, Steve Kerr's X's and O's, Lenny Wilkins X's and O's, uh, Le, Phil Jackson's X's and O's, Steve Kerr, his, uh, his clipboard, um, Coach Dawkins he uses, uh, and this is the score. That's uh, where you get sales at. So if it's in San Francisco, text me and uh, I might even uh, come by and work your booth with you because it's so fun.